Hope you're having a good day today. It is January 15th. Our reading brings us to Joseph. Let's get over there together. In Genesis chapter 40. Genesis 40 at uh, verse 1. Joseph interpreting the prisoner's dreams, obviously. Joseph had been sold into the hand of the Ishmaelites. The Ishmaelites had brought him to Egypt. He's in Potiphar's house. And then we know what Potiphar's wife does. And Joseph finds himself in the dungeon. But the Lord is with him there. And you have the account of the prisoner's dreams, the butler and the baker, as it is there in verse 1. They have, they have two dreams. The Lord, through Joseph... Um, interprets it, interprets both dreams, one of them good, one of them not so much as the chief baker was going to be. Verse 22, but he hanged the chief baker as Joseph had interpreted to them, yet the chief butler did not remember Joseph, but forgot him. Joseph had asked, had said, hey, can you please remember me when you, you know, Come back into your position, and the butler did not do that, at least for a time. Now in chapter 41, Pharaoh has dreams, and then the butler remembers. Verse 9, I remember my faults this day. And so Daniel, Daniel, good grief. Joseph is going to come, and the interpretation is going to be given to Pharaoh. Pharaoh, then Joseph is going to be promoted. Pharaoh says to the servants, Can we find such a one as this, a man in whom is the Spirit of God? And Pharaoh says, You shall be over my house. I've set you over all the land of Egypt. Verse 42, Pharaoh took his signet ring off his hand, put it on Joseph's hand, and he clothed him in garments of fine linen and put a gold chain around his neck. And he had him ride on, in the second chariot which he had, and they cried out before him, Bow the knee. And so he set him over all the land of Egypt. Pharaoh also said to Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and without your consent no man may lift his hand or foot. In all the land of Egypt, Pharaoh called Joseph's name zaphnath Paneah, and he gave him a wife. And as that's happening, Joseph's going to have two children, Manasseh and Ephraim. Okay, verse 50, to Joseph were born two sons. Joseph called the name of the firstborn Manasseh, for God has made me forget all my toil and all my father's house. And that is what the word Manasseh means, is forget. There in that passage, making forgetful. God has made me forget all my toil. The name of the second he called Ephraim, for God has caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. And then the seven years of plenty, which were in the land of Egypt, ended. All right, what points might we make about that passage? Because that's the one I wanted to key on. One point I wanted to make is is that it is good to it is good to move on sometimes. Thinking of what Paul says, I forget those things which are behind, and I press on the upward calling. Okay, all those things said he counted them as dung, King James Version. Counted them as loss, other versions. Sometimes it's good to press on. Uh, we'll talk about it, and sometimes it's not good to press on, or we'll talk about remembering things in um, tomorrow's study. But sometimes it's good to press on. And as Joseph says, God has made me forget all my toil and all my father's house. And you can just tell, obviously Joseph couldn't literally forget. But you can tell as, as the Lord has been with him and in the place that he is now, it, it, it's an interesting thing that he says. And, and it shows what's going on in his, in his mind and heart. Obviously, we know the whole story, but we are, we are just barely through, right? Seven years of plenty, seven years of famine. So, there's a good ways to go. And just think about where Joseph is when he says, God has made me forget all my toil and all my father's house. 
And he's pressing on. He's pressing on. But then you have Ephraim. God has caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. And it's good to be thankful in the land of our affliction. That Joseph was still a stranger in a strange land. I think he's getting... I'm not sure if it's... I don't think it's wrong to say this. He's he's getting more comfortable, if you will. And pardon me if you don't care for me putting it like that. But he's putting down roots. He's got a family now. And this is... He is a stranger in a strange land. But... He's less of a stranger than he was when he got there. And eventually, Jacob and all the other brothers, they're going to come down to Goshen. Joseph is thankful. Even in the midst of of these things, he's thankful. And that's Ephraim. God has caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. Now verse 53. Then the seven years of plenty which were in the land of Egypt ended. And so what's going to have to happen is, as much as he has a wife now, he has children now, he's at Pharaoh's right hand, as much as all of those things are happening, there is the bigger picture to consider. And, as I said, we have the benefit of knowing the whole story, and frankly, being able to read it in a matter of minutes. Well, this th- these things are happening over years. Joseph is 17 when he comes to Egypt. He's 30 when he stands before Pharaoh. Seven years of plenty, seven years of famine. You start doing the math. Years, decades, decades are going by. And so... Eventually, what he's going to do is he's going to back up and see the bigger picture. But it's not wrong for right now to speak to, to speak of Manasseh and Ephraim. That God, that he's pressing on, he's pushing forward. Right? It'd be, it's, it's real easy sometimes to dwell on everything that's happened in the past. Sometimes you just got to, and thankfully... Forget all my toil and all my right, all these things that have happened, and got and recognize God has blessed me, even in the midst of this affliction. God has blessed me. Appreciate you. Hope this brief look into God's word has been helpful for you. Hope you join us for our next brief study.